Hello and welcome to Middlebury 5.0. I am your host, Officer Chris Mason, and with me in the studio today is Laurie Patton, the new president of Middlebury College. Welcome to the show, Laurie. It's wonderful to be here. It's great to have you here. Yeah. You're, you're famous. You're like a local celebrity. Well, uh, <laughs> I do feel sometimes that I get way too much credit just for showing up. Uh, <laughs> But Middlebury yep. has been an incredible community so far, right. um, and I mm -hmm. go in to get a cup of coffee, and people are thrilled that I'm going to get a cup, cup of coffee, and I said, you know, I used to do this when I was a regular person, so right. I'm going to still do it, but, but I've uh, yep. really made a point of trying mm -hmm. to get to know the business people mm -hmm. around town, introduce myself, uh, sure. come and hang out when I can, and I've just loved being part of this community even for mm -hmm. the few months that I've been here. Fabulous. Yeah. So w what, does it, what does it mean to be president of, of a college? Because well, when I think of president, I think, you know, Oval Office. Yes, and right. Veto. And, right, and, those know, kinds of things. All those things. images yeah. flash through my mind. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it, I, I think in some ways it's similar. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is that college presidents have to embody and personify the values of a college. Okay. Um, and it's... Middlebury is not just a college now, it's also Monterey out in California. Sure. So we are actually going now by the term Middlebury without any mm -hmm. specific reference to the institute or the college when we talk about the whole unit. And then we talk about the college when we mean the college, which is of course at the center of everything still, yep. but Breadloaf and the language schools and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing you need to do is um, be constantly referring to and articulating what those values are wherever you are. Um, so okay. that's a certain kind of symbolic function mm -hmm. that is really important. And by sheer accident, but also there are no accidents in life, <laughs> yep. um, I am a big aficionado in doing research on language learning mm -hmm. of ancient language. My area is South Asian studies and sure. I work in India. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always been a huge uh, fan of and thinker about language. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a creative writer. I've published two books of poetry. So, And I, right. Bread Loaf was like a thing when I was mm -hmm. growing up in New England. was this a major space that I always wanted to be part of. Yep. Um, I had uh, a lot of recent experience as the Dean of Arts and Sciences at Duke thinking mm -hmm. about liberal arts sure. and global liberal arts and what that was. Um, and I've really been interested in conflict mediation and some of the policy issues that Monterey has been involved with for mm -hmm. many, many years. So every single piece of it kind mm -hmm. of fell together. Yep. And so in that way, it's very easy for me to personify or mm -hmm. embody the values of, the, of, of Middlebury. Because right. um, it sounds like it could be a pretty constraining yes. thing to have to do. Like if it wasn't a natural fit, that would be yes. incredibly difficult. So. It, you got it. Right. You nailed it. So <laughs> so what mm -hmm. I say is it's really easy for me to be president mm -hmm. of Middlebury. Yep. It would be much harder for me to be, you know, president of uh, a business oriented university only sure. or an engineering, you know, right. a place where it was primarily engineering mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Yep. Um, but one of the things I said to my faculty recently is you might wonder what we do all day. And so I just read <laughs> out my schedule. Yep. Um, a lot of the job mm -hmm. is uh, thinking through policies and better mm -hmm. policies yep. um, and making sure that, you know, presidents, a lot of people think presidents have power. We actually have very little. Mm -hmm. But what I'm more interested in influence than I am in power in general. Right. And so it sort of suits me to be working with my senior leadership team and saying, well, how about this different policy on diversity? Mm -hmm. um, let's think anew about how we think about faculty research and mm -hmm. research funds. Um, what about the role of the library, you know, et cetera? And then um, go from those big picture questions down to the everyday decisions that we might make about changing policy um, that my team really makes with me. Right. Um, and so that's the second thing. Um, the third thing is constantly talking and thinking about student life and how mm -hmm. student life could be better. Um, one of the big things that we're juggling with as every campus is, I think we're doing it really well, I'm proud of us, but there are huge challenges too. Um, mm -hmm. We can always do better. Um, it's thinking about both student stress and mindfulness, uh, mm -hmm. as, which is a big topic everywhere, as well as diversity. And so I'm in the dining halls, I eat uh, with students in the dining halls on a regular basis, listening sure. to what their concerns are. Um, and thinking about curriculum and mm -hmm. um, 
how do we want to engage all the different programs at Monterey? How do we want to think about our uh, distribution requirements at Middlebury? Do we want to have more um, engagement with online networks at Breadloaf? You know, mm -hmm. and those are the questions that I get to raise, and other people then need to think about how do we answer them. Right. Um, so, and then you know, sporting athletics, going mm -hmm. to a lot of games, hanging out. That's been yep. such a great joy for me. Uh, wasn't mm -hmm. part of being the dean at Duke. Right. And um, going to you know any number of soccer games, hockey games. I have two big dogs, and it seems to me that whenever I bring my dogs to the games, people score goals, <laughs> and so I'm very happy they seem to be talismans of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> so, so does that answer your question? I, I think it do does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You love that question. Like, what do you do all do, day? Yeah, what yeah. is what your thing? What, what right, exactly? right. Oh, and <laughs> fundraising, which was the most important right. thing. Um, <laughs> I just heard from the development yeah. office that I've hit a record for number of alumni and trustees and mm -hmm. people in general that a person, a president has met mm -hmm. in a semester. So I'm feeling mm -hmm. very happy about that. Uh, but yeah, sure. so I do a lot of fundraising as well. So it sounds like engagement is really at the root of just about all of those yeah. functions. That's really the, the kind of crux of it. It is, mm -hmm. in many ways. It's partly about um, making sure that you're connected mm -hmm. to what's happening in the classroom, what's happening on the athletic field, what's happening with alumni, mm -hmm. um, what's happening financially. Yeah. And the more you can stay connected, the better off you are. Right. Um, and a lot of it, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing to say, and I think it's a, really related to what you just said, Chris, which mm -hmm. is the sense of community is built by presence. Mm -hmm. um, I think if kids know that I'm going to be present to them, so I have my office, in addition to going to the dining halls, I have my office hours in um, the coffee shop. Sure. So people see you're, that you're out and about and you're mm -hmm. not sort of sequestered away in your third floor office, etc. Right. So. Is, is that a common model? Is that how presidents are generally conceived? Because when I, if, you know, thinking about a, a president of any organization, right. but, but a college, yeah. you know, I, I would think traditionally it would be something more removed, something yes. more kind of yeah. you know, above and yes. isolated, yes. and kind of looking down, taking the broad view, yes. and, and not really interacting with the... Yes. Definitely. Yeah. That, that has been, a, I'd say, more of a stereotype than right. an actuality. All mm -hmm. good presidents are out there, you know, mm -hmm. hanging out with people. Yeah. Um, but I will say that my, I think there's a generational shift. A lot mm -hmm. of people in my generation want to do this role differently, sure. partly by being more engaged. I also think that we tend to be a little bit more informal mm -hmm. than the previous generation. And so that means that we're going to be a little more kind of easygoing and so on. Yeah. Um, and I think students and faculty really want more high touch in a certain mm -hmm. way. Um, but I also would say I'm probably a little more extreme than most in mm -hmm. wanting to connect with people. I'm very right. much of a high touch kind of person in general. Mm -hmm. And um, I also think that, you know, the, the more interaction one can have within the community at, mm -hmm. a, a, a more broadly, Middlebury, the city of Middlebury, mm -hmm. the better off we'll all be. Sure. Um, and so that's a whole other level of um, engagement that I think I want to change the perception that we're the college on the hill. You right. know, I want to get our kids mm -hmm. and faculty and staff to wave when they cross the street. Mm -hmm. You know, and the kids are all over this. They're going to write an editorial about it. <laughs> yep, but right. actually getting people to mm -hmm. do it, you know, when I'm walking across today, this morning when it started to snow, I was walking across with a whole bunch of students, and I, mm -hmm. I turned to them and said, do you know who the person is that's stopping for us? And, mm -hmm. and they said no. And I said, well, whoever it is, wave to them. Yeah. Um, so I think that that model is more about accessibility mm -hmm. um, and vision and authenticity. Mm -hmm. Those three words really matter to me as a form of leadership more than an august sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You are, by nature of the job, at 30,000 feet. You mm -hmm. have to be because sure. you're dealing with, you know, the summary, executive summaries of every office that you supervise. Sure. Um, but you get to say when you're interacting with people, I'm not going to go in the weeds with you. That's your job. Mm -hmm. But here's what I see and tell me how this seems to you and so on. Right. And people really appreciate that 30,000 foot view mm -hmm. as long as it's kind of a bird's eye view that's different than, you know, a kind of overly removed, um, mm -hmm. uh, arrogant view. Right, yeah. 
Well, I mean, you, you know, you could interact with a student. You could have a conversation and, and hear their concerns or their vision, but, but then you have to be able to integrate that with faculty issues yep. and organizational issues yep. and, and the fundraising part of it, the yep. business aspect of, of running a, a college, an institution yep. like that. So, yeah, and yeah. You, 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 I imagine in, in your mm. profession as well, it's a little bit like this. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to deal with multiple constituencies and mm -hmm. turn at the drop of a hat and move to the next thing. And you, you have to enjoy it because mm -hmm. if you don't enjoy that or if you find that stressful, then you're not going to enjoy this kind of job. Right. Um, I joke with friends and family about that in a way you, you almost have to have functional ADD, you know, where you're <laughs> constantly moving from, you know, one right. thing to another. <laughs> um, and it actually mm -hmm. works out really well because mm -hmm. you love the kind of movement from one sphere to another. Mm -hmm. And um, you also like the switching gears. You don't mm -hmm. find it stressful. So yeah. on any given day, um, I will begin with a meeting with my dean of faculty, move to a fundraising event, um, move to a uh, discussion with a CEO of a local corporation, mm -hmm. uh, move back to a communications issue that we have to deal with, um, end with dinner with students or mm -hmm. tonight I'm having the faculty of, I'm having all the faculty over for dinner department by department so they're gonna, my first right. department's coming over. Mm -hmm. So that would be a kind of typical day but you also have to always be in the learner role mm -hmm. because the most amazing thing about the privilege of, of working for Middlebury is you're surrounded by people who do stuff that you could never do, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And yep. you're so amazed mm -hmm. that people can do and have the talent to do what they do. Yeah. Um, I had lunch with students today, and one student I met was doing a senior project on how bilingual people make mm -hmm. economic decisions differently. And do you mm. make decisions about money differently in German than you would in English? Wow. You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> this is fabulous. What a wonderful yeah. thing to do. So I walk back and like, what, mm. a, you know, what a privilege to be mm. able to sit with these kids and, and listen to them. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've had the good fortune of getting to interact with, uh, with various college students. And yes. It I is, hope they've behaved for they, you. They have, very much so. Good, <laughs> good. <laughs> well, for the most part. Yes, I'm sure say, you have some. I wouldn't say always. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but I've been very, very impressed. Yeah. Um, on a on a lot of different levels. I mean, fascinating. The I mean, such creative ideas. Yeah. And again and again, an incredible um, dedication to service. Yes. Like really, um, kind of outward looking. Like yeah. I remember my time in in college. Yeah. And I mean, it was interesting in a variety of ways, but right. I tended to be a little self-absorbed when I was in college. And yeah. A lot of the Middlebury College students I, I've spoken to, you know, they're, they're engaged with you know, programs in Africa right. or, or local right. literacy programs. Yep. They're volunteering. Yeah. I, I would never have contemplated doing right. those kinds of things when I was in college. Yeah. It's fabulously impressive. They, they mm -hmm. uh, thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so proud of our students. They do mm -hmm. want to make the world better. It's yeah. really clear that that's mm -hmm. where they're focused. And I think the tension that they feel sometimes is there is a Middlebury, you know, the joke is, we all mm -hmm. have the joke of the Middlebury bubble, you know, mm -hmm. that there is a way in which it's almost such a close-knit and caring and rigorous community all at the same time right. that you can get caught up in mm -hmm. those issues and concerns. And then mm -hmm. you have the study abroad program that you're going on, or mm -hmm. you have the work in Africa that you want to continue from whatever you did in Africa from right. the summer before, sure. or uh, uh, any number of things like that. And so there's a kind of um, almost a ricochet from mm -hmm. highly engaged to the Middlebury bubble, and then mm -hmm. highly engaged to the Middlebury bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and I occasionally I'll hear a student say, you know, well, what are we doing here? We're in the middle of nowhere, et cetera. And I say, you know, right. you're really not. You're mm -hmm. you're deeply somewhere. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think sometimes, you know, that tension between being global and being local mm -hmm. is felt even more by Middlebury kids because they're so moving back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, so often in a particular way. Right. Um, but that yeah, they 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 teach us. I think that part of being a good educator is to know what in any generation mm -hmm. is something where kids need to lead, where students need to lead. Mm -hmm. I think on diversity issues, students need to lead today. Right. Um, I think on um, technology issues, students mm -hmm. need to lead. Now that doesn't mean that we abdicate 
our role as sure. educators, but that we let them tell us what their experience is and create edu educational models because of that. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if you know they've never read a certain kind of literature before, mm -hmm. and we just need to keep up with the class, you know, three or four days ahead. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It's that there's a fundamental difference between our experience and theirs, and our job is to listen better to what their experience is. Um, and that's what I think is, is really important. And, and I, I think when kids know mm -hmm. that administrators, faculty, other older adults are listening to them, it goes better in general. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. Well, it sounds beautiful. Yeah, I'm sold. Yeah, I know. Come on in. Me. Yeah, yeah, you should, yeah, to come. <laughs> exactly. Well, you well, know, it's, I think one of the mm -hmm. things that I, I liberal arts more generally that I mm -hmm. that I worry about for for our kids is, are we giving them enough training in the world, mm -hmm. um, and are we giving them enough sense of what the world's like? after Middlebury. Right. Um, we can make our community as perfect as possible. Uh, we just were featured on a PBS special on entrepreneurship. I don't sure. know if you saw it, but it was very, very fun. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see it, but I've, actually, I've gotten to know a lot of, of the Middlebury stru student entrepreneurs oh, over you? the years. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah. what have they, can you give me some examples of what they've been doing? I, I remember there was one student who was developing a line of, of yogurt. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just, you know, I remember meeting him at the farmer's market and yeah. he was talking about how he was uh, commercializing the venture right. and, and kind of branding it. Yep. And, and it, was, it, was, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and that, we, we had a couple of folks featured. One mm -hmm. is a wonderful student who um, actually served mm -hmm. in the military and then um, created a repurposing of military um, uh, uh, like the hardware? And the uh, no, the, uh, the fabric and the oh, okay. to, to, to use for other purposes, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then there was um, somebody who's created seed beds for right. people who want to do either urban or backyard gardening. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're like sheets. And you put them down, and because they're actually contained, all you need to do is water them, mm -hmm. and then they, they grow. And right. um, he said, look, you know, I looked at my generation, and these are folks who were in urban situations, many of them, but they still want to have a window garden, or they want to do it in the yeah. backyard. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't want to necessarily have, take all the time to become expert gardeners. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, these are just wonderful examples of kinds of things that occur to people in everyday life. Right. Um, and we had a retreat recently of folks who were really engaged in student creativity and um, entrepreneurship more broadly and social innovation and so mm -hmm. on. And one of the things that emerged that really struck us is there is a tradition of um, Yankee tinkering, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> changing and right. making things work on an everyday basis, mm -hmm. like the seedbed. Um, yeah. or repurposing, you know, clothing mm -hmm. in the military. And I think that um, I really resonated with that idea, and I think that's what I love about being at Middlebury, is mm -hmm. that there's a, um, there's, a, there's a concept in India called yuga, and what that means, it comes from yoga, the, mm -hmm. the Sanskrit, I'm a scholar of ancient Indian languages. Sure. And um, that term means, uh, in contemporary parlance, it means making it work figuring mm -hmm. it out and mm -hmm. um, making the ox cart, repurposing the ox cart so you can carry the computer via the ox cart to the next village. You right. know, and that's what happens in India now mm -hmm. all the time. And I love that idea. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same kind of idea in New England, that there's mm -hmm. that whole tradition of making things work um, mm -hmm. and repurposing things. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that kids have really picked up on that. But the mm -hmm. other thing that strikes me is that they're also philosophers. They, mm -hmm. they think a lot about how to make the world better while they're doing it. I mean, I've asked right. several of them, you know, why aren't you in an engineering school, you know, mm -hmm. if you're doing this kind of making thing? And they say, I really want the liberal arts grounding while right. I'm doing this other thing. So they want to mm -hmm. put the two things together quite often. That's, That's really good. intriguing because yeah. it, it challenges another kind of preconception about liberal arts, about, about yes. colleges. And yes. It's generally conceived as a very rarefied thing. You, you, know, you go, you study philosophy or right. sociology or what it might, whatever it might be, but it's all very academic. It's yes. all very kind of refined and 
almost intentionally divorced from the right. the tawdry the everyday daily. world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it, it generally doesn't have much direct kind of integration right. with, with the everyday. Well, um, I think that's mm -hmm. true. Um, mm -hmm. That there's definitely it's like the perception of the mm -hmm. college president is removed. You exactly. Know, yeah. That you Similar can kind sort of, of thing, yeah. yeah the yeah. ivory tower sort mm -hmm. of idea. So the way I put it, and I. It, I think that this is related to both how you think about knowledge as mm -hmm. well as how you think about a college more generally or mm -hmm. Monterey, um, where in Monterey classes you're actually changing the practice and the policy in the class. Right. You're with your mentor, because it's a uh, more master's programs, you're doing work in water energy conservation mm -hmm. that will be used mm -hmm. probably as soon as you finish the class. So there's an right. immediate kind of engagement. That's so exciting. It yeah. is exciting, mm -hmm. um, but it's not uncontroversial, right? There's, right. There are folks who really feel that this could take away from mm -hmm. liberal learning. And sure. the way I put it is a little bit different, which is I think it could deepen liberal learning. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as an either or. Um, right. I am about as irrelevant in my research. I study texts mm -hmm. from 1500 BCE <laughs> in Sanskrit, <laughs> yeah. right? So I am so committed to the classics and mm -hmm. classical literature, it's kind sure. of where I live. But I also know that you are a better maker and worker and thinker in the world mm -hmm. um, when you're doing both at the mm -hmm. same time. You're always engaged in one thing or another. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that f helping our students find a way to do that mm -hmm. and allow for the um, reading philosophy while you're thinking about the seedbed mm -hmm. um, really makes a difference. Yeah. Um, and there will be times when you need to be as creative as you can in the world in order to protect something that you love. Mm -hmm. um, my example that, that I frequently give is um, Sanskrit is a, uh, always a language that is both extremely rarefied in India, mm -hmm. but um, people really are fascinated by it. Yeah. And I had a woman who said, I'm going to, I don't know if I could make a living teaching Sanskrit, but mm -hmm. one possibility is to think about the value that Sanskrit brings. And it's a language of greeting in India. Mm -hmm. And so she created a greeting card company. Right. And with some of the money that was raised, she supported a department of Sanskrit so that it could still exist at a local university. Right. Yeah. So there will be things that our creativity can support um, and I think, therefore, we need to develop those skills mm -hmm. as much as possible as we are doing the research on uh, ancient Greece or mm -hmm. democracy in mm -hmm. you know, Africa in the 10th century or whatever right. it might be. Yeah, I would, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah. Right? I studied philosophy when I was in, when I was in college. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so how did you get from being philosophy to being a police officer? And, and that is a long <laughs> Give me the short story version. story with... <laughs> uh, there, w there was a lot of traveling, a lot yep. of world traveling. Yep. There, was, uh, there was life on a commune in... In Israel. Well, th in Israel, <laughs> but also in, in the U.S. as well. I spent some time on a kibbutz in Israel, but I lived on a, on a hippie commune in rural Virginia for a number of years. Wow. And um, uh, life as an artist. And, when, uh, when were you... What years were you living... In rural Virginia? Um, from about 2000 to 2010. Okay, so long time. It was, yeah, it was a long period. Yeah. So did it feel like this was a way to be community connected? Like Absolutely, you? that was the draw of, of law enforcement, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So a, lo a lot of people think of those things, you're living on a, on a commune, living within communities, yeah. and being a police officer is diametrically opposed, but the thread is that community aspect. Sure, yeah. absolutely. I want him to be involved in community. Right, and getting where people are. Mm -hmm. I have a very dear friend who uh, was a police officer in Atlanta, and mm -hmm. she said, you know, that the, it was in an odd way almost an honor to mm -hmm. be with people who were in extreme situations. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And yet you're there to help them. You're the person, mm, right. you know, whoever it is, you're the person. It is a tremendous privilege. Yeah. yeah it's, it's to be there. Often as their lives are falling apart, yeah. you're there while they're at their most vulnerable. Right, and exactly. There's, there's an intimacy. 
to that, which hugely very unexpected. I yeah, didn't anticipate that. absolutely. I mean, I think mm. that's part of people who work in ministerial roles. Right. I sometimes mm. am in that space. You know, if they're getting mm -hmm. their degree, it's not exactly a mm -hmm. life falling apart. But the other side, sure. you know, of kind of an accomplishment moment, and that's yeah. an incredible privilege to, to be part of that yeah. as well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about your background. We're, we're, yes. we're running out of time. We don't okay. have a lot of time yeah, left. Yeah. But I know, I know you have um, an academic background. Yes. And you touched upon the fact that um, you've, you've studied Sanskrit yep. and, um, and Eastern religion. Mm -hmm. um, and you've studied religion in general, comparative religion as yes. part, of your, part yep. of your background. Yeah. And uh, feminist theology, is that? Well, I do have worked in, um, mm -hmm. done some uh, scholarly work in women in India, both right. in the ancient world and sure. then in the contemporary world. I'm doing mm -hmm. this large scale study of women who have taken up this uh, teaching and study of Sanskrit because right. basically they were prohibited mm -hmm. from doing so for millennia. Yeah. Um, but now in the post-colonial mm -hmm. India, there are many, many more women who are taking mm -hmm. up the study of it. So yeah, it's it's the comparative religion more generally. I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of work in interfaith relations and so sure. on on a national scale, mm -hmm. and um, that has been a tremendous help in terms of connecting with communities. One yeah. of the things I'm really interested in, um, both at Middlebury but also more broadly, is um, how in situations where people are thrown together and have to live with difference, mm -hmm. how they make it work. Right. Because it's not as if the difference is going to go away, mm -hmm. but they're still going to make it work. Um, mm -hmm. And that question of um, living together and finding mm -hmm. a way to live together, both the philosophy of it as well mm -hmm. as the pragmatics of it, back to that combination of sure. philosophy and pragmatics, yeah. um, is I think where many people in co comparative religion have great skill. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of uh, folks who are administrators um, have background in religion because they like yeah. thinking about the big picture <laughs> as well as the small picture. Right. Well, um, as, as we move towards a more global community, this is really becoming the crux of sustaining ourselves. Exactly. And, like, if we're not going to destroy ourselves, yeah. we have to find a way to, to live in peace together and it's yep. going to take resolution on that fundamental level. Yes, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. And I think, you know, part of the role that an academic institution can play, I, mm -hmm. I talk about dismantling the ivory tower, mm -hmm. that that's part of what we need to do. Right. But, you know, we probably need an ivory fence over which <laughs> neighbors can shake hands. <laughs> um, and that is probably good in general. Right. Um, I'm in Robert Frost country, so we sure. can talk about fences <laughs> in some interesting yes. ways. Uh -huh. um, but I, I do think that mm -hmm. thinking about liberal arts institutions and academic institutions in mm -hmm. general as ways, models, opportunities for us to think through models for the good life for what a good life looks like in the 21st mm -hmm. century um, mm -hmm. and giving students in particular the opportunity to try mm -hmm. that is what's so exciting about being here. The other thing I would say, you know, this community has been so uh, welcoming to those mm -hmm. kinds of partnerships. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm walking into a history of partnerships that I love, whether it's on Exchange Street or the community theater or um, we're working on a dog park. There's all sorts mm -hmm. of different possible projects. Um, I love that there's that tradition, and I want to make mm -hmm. sure that we deepen that tradition as much mm -hmm. as we can. I'm tremendously excited about some of the local partnerships that we can build, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very interested in them being long-lasting mm -hmm. and not just episodic. Sure. Um, and that's going to take some time. That'll mm -hmm. be a challenge, but right. I want to make sure I said this on mm -hmm. this community TV <laughs> station. <laughs> well, so. you, I mean, you seem a great fit for the college, but you seem a tremendous fit for the for the community for the yeah. area as a town well, a lot of what you're talking about really resonates well good i'm yeah. so glad it does and <laughs> i'm just so thrilled to be talking to a <laughs> philosopher police officer i mean it's a total middlebury moment it's <laughs> wonderful well thank you so much for coming on the show Laurie. thank you it's delightful to yeah. be here i have to have you back talk about poetry and let's do it yeah i'm i'm there <laughs> just Great. tell me when thanks so much thank you bye-bye until next time, drive safe and may all your mischief be of the lawful persuasion.